the South Portland Red Riots and Bangor Rams matchup. Back at it again this year. Always exciting when two teams come back to the championship game. Many of the players here tonight, most of the Bangor players, participated last year, Willie. Yeah, the only one I could think that did not would be Newman. Everyone else for Bangor is back and ready to go at it again. I don't suppose they moved the floor up from Portland, do you? I don't think so. John Tennant at 6-3 for Bangor. Jerry Livingston at 6-2 for South Portland. The players in the center circle, and Bangor will have the basketball to get the state championship game underway. That's Heaston on the baseline, and Dean scores early for Bangor. Dean will get a lot of the crashing on the boards for the Rams as this game goes on, too. South Portland Red Riots, a foul line. The shot is a little long for Darren Inverso. And Bangor on the rebound. It's Reed. Foul line. Runner is good. Didn't waste any time on putting four on the board real quick. Ryan Hodge on the baseline. Dishes off. Steve Toms with a miss. And Bangor on the rebound. It's Reed again out front. Over on the left is Tennant. Won't get it. And the rebound comes away to Rich of South Portland. Knocked loose and out of bounds by Chris Pickering of Bangor. Last touch by South Portland. Reed, a lot of times, he's known for his offensive aggressiveness. And you get a real good look at it there. Anything to the lane, he's going to take. And we see full court man to man pressure early by the South Portland Red Riots. That's no surprise. No, I think they like to play that up tempo and play you head right up in your face. Bradford out front for Bangor on the right to Tennant. Tennant had a great Eastern Maine Championship game. Easton out front gives it off to Pickering. Down to Tennant on the baseline. John's got it. And it's a 6 0 Bangor lead. 6.25 to go in the first. Down low, and Verzo, it's in and out. Bounced out of bounds on the rebound. Last touch by Bangor. And Verzo was real fortunate not to pick up that player control. You mentioned Tennant a little while ago. He did come back from Mono, but they're going to go to him down on the blocks. Anywhere there's a mismatch, the Rams are going to go to that individual person. Ryan Hodge of South Portland hits it from the foul line, and it's a 6-2 game. And it's Tennant bringing it up for Bangor. Over to Houston on the left. Now off to Bradford. Bradford out front. He's got it. And Bangor comes out smoking. That was good for two. Everyone on Bangor is capable of scoring 20, 25 a night. They don't have any, quote, individual stars. They can all play. Ball knocked loose out front. Rich will come up with it. He was the young man who was the hero, one of the heroes down in uh, Portland last year. Came in off the bench, helped the rally. The shot is missed by Livingston on the left side, and it's Reed on the rebound for Bangor. Mark pushes it up. Down low, Bradford is left open, misses it. And South Portland on the rebound. Probably couldn't believe how wide open he really was. <laughs> that seemed to be the case. Long cross-court pass to Hodge. Hodge for three, and it's short. Bradford on the rebound. And off to Reed in the backcourt. Now up to Tennant. 5-10 to go, first quarter. Bangor's done a real good job not giving South Portland that second shot off the defensive board. Easton out front, three-point land. It's too long, and it's Rich on the rebound. He'll bring it up. Rich down the middle, and a travel just before the collision. I think Rich is happy with that call. I think you're right, and Tony DeBias wants to call a timeout for South Portland. We'll take a 30-second timeout. That was quite a collision underneath the basket just before the timeout, Willie. Every time Rich has gotten the ball, he's pushing it up. He wants to play transition basketball. The whistle went the other way, and as we can see it, those of us that are looking at that TV set right now, it definitely was a travel. A lot of people will contend and say, and our first indication was maybe a play of control, but second time around, you get a much better look. 4.54 to go first quarter. It's Bangor 8, South Portland 2. Bangor with the ball, facing full court pressure again. Into Bradford. Off to Tennant. 
Tennant gives you that other dimension. They, they look at Reed to be the ball handler, but Tennant certainly can do the job when he has to. Reed pull up jumper right of the foul line, won't get the bounce. And Burt Rich on the rebound for South Portland. Ahead to Inverso, yeah. and he's called for a travel. What a substitution in there now for Bangor looking down through. I'm not sure, is that Ed Boys or? What's the number we have? 52 for Bangor. Rob Jarvis? Jarvis, Jarvis. Get my players mixed up here when you don't see him very often. 6'6", six, six, Junior, he hasn't seen a, a lot of action in the tournament, but he comes off the bench, gives him some good size under there. Here we go, Bangor running that screen down, trying to isolate underneath. The pass overthrown to Bradford right into the hands of South Portland. Burt Rich brings it up. Off to Livingston. Livingston tries to go baseline, dishes it off on the right side to Toms. And he'll bring it back out front to Rich. Rich for three. It's good. Oh. Rich buries it out front for three. And it's now 8-5. Bangor by three with 3.50 to go first quarter. John Tennant guarded by Burt Rich as he brings it up, and Rich is called for the foul yeah. at midcourt. Yeah. Tennant really, having come back from that bout with Mono and getting the extra three or four days because of the cancellation from the storm, really, I feel, is going to be a big factor in this ball game. Watching him in the Eastern Main game, it almost seemed like he's peaking right now. He's had an opportunity to rest. He's not stale. Tennant on the baseline, won't get the bounce. The rebound tapped around under there. Rich bounces it off his foot out of bounds as he and Tom's both under there. A little indecision and... I got it, you got it. Whoop, whoop. Neither of us do. Hesitated just long enough. And Bangor ball underneath their basket. Tennant will put it in to Pickering. Pickering will fire it up. He hits it. Basket counts and he is fouled by Darren Inverso. Going back to what we said originally in this ball game, everyone from Bangor can score. They always have the inside thread in the paint, and then they have people like Pickering that even though he's playing out of position on the perimeter, can stand out there and stick the jump shot. And the foul by Inverso, the second team foul on South Portland, his first, and Chris Pickering makes the foul shot, completes a three-point play. Bangor leads 11-5, 3.25 to go first quarter. Bangor's happy right now to go with that 2-3 zone. Down low, Tom's underneath. Jarvis. Going to be fouled. Mm -hmm. Rob Jarvis, number 52, with Bangor's first foul. I'm sure Bangor likes to think of themselves as a straight man-to-man -man team, but a lot of times they'll go into that 2-3 zone, and they have such outstanding athletes that they play that very, very well. That 2-3 being a real strong defensive set when you have the good athletes to complement it. And Dean Heaston of Bangor checks back in for Rob Jarvis. Steve Toms on the foul line. And he's a 71.7% free throw shooter. Both of these teams, uh, the five main players on the floor, are excellent foul shooters, both sides. When you have schools this size, the population of the schools, it gives you a lot of young talent to draw from. So Toms buries the foul shots, and it's an 11-7 game. Toms and Inverso, the two starters back from that championship team last year. John Tennant off on the right to Bradford. Foul line, it's Pickering. Runs into traffic, gives it off to Reed. Reed quickly on the left to Heaston. Back out front to Reed, now to Tennant. On the right to Pickering. Under three minutes to go, first quarter. Bangor by four. Reed at the foul line. Shoots over Toms, it's long, tapped up by Bradford, but he crashed oh, in from behind. Bangor just going with that basic motion offense that they run, screen down, screen down, count to five. If you don't get the ball, go back, pick someone, constant movement. First foul on Bradford, and each team has two now. 2.45 to go in the first. Livingston down the middle, dumps it off to Toms, and Toms, with a good position, just has to lay it off the glass. Bangor by a basket. Two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. It's Tennant. Nearly stolen away. Knocked out of bounds by Ryan Hodge of South Portland. 
Now, th th this is not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to be able to drive between his own. That's where the strength of it is. But he gets into the paint and dumps it off. Pretty good offensive move by Toombs to lay it up and in. Had to do it in traffic. And it's Reed on the left to Heaston. Down low, posting up is Bradford, but is stolen away by Jerry Livingston. Off to Burt Rich. Rich with a long up court pass to Hodge. Hodge down low and Verzo gets in between two players underneath, but a little intimidation there. He changed his shot and misses it. Reed brings it up for Bangor at the two minute mark here in the first quarter. Bangor by a basket, tenant on the left, looking down low. Gives it to Pickering at the foul line, down the middle. Low contact, no good. Easton with the putback. <laughs> We said this in the Eastern Main Finals. You don't notice him till the game's over and see what he's done. The old cliche, the unsung hero, but I think it's appropriate. Down low, Tom's missing underneath. You know, all kinds of traffic under there. Down in that packed in zone. Reed the other way. Bangor, the runner for the three, is no good. And a collision on the rebound. That yeah, looks to be a Bangor foul. If you're Tony Tobias, you have to give yourself a plus as far as getting back on defense. That time, we had four people back down there. Action underneath. Pickering must go with a jump shot. Nothing. Loose ball, and there he is. Talked about him before. Always seems to be in the right place at the right time. The box is out real well. Minute 15 to go, first quarter. Bangor by four. South Portland with the basketball. It's Burt Rich. On the right to Livingston. Yeah. Uh, he makes a pass down low that goes over the head of Darren Inverzo, and Bangor picks it off. Bangor's gone back with their man to man set. One minute to go in the first quarter. Bangor by four. Mark Reed with the ball out front to Houston. Off to Pickering. Yeah. 10 and 6 3. Rich is only 5 9. That's what they're trying to get the mismatch. Bradford tries to go baseline, gets behind the basket, tosses it over the backboard and in. Did I really see that? Is that what he did? Or is it because we're so high? No, that's, <laughs> that's an old horse shot. We want to see that one again. Rich with a long three. It's an air ball. Rebound, Tom's up and no good. Bradford on the rebound. 15-9, Bangor, 24 seconds to go in the first. Tennant, deep in the left corner, fires it up and in for three. 18-9, Bangor near the end of the first quarter. Burnt Rich slowing it down for the last shot of the quarter for South Portland. Off to Livingston. Livingston fires along three off the back of the iron. It's tapped up and no good. And Bradford will throw it up at the gun, and it's short. That one didn't go in. No, I think we're sure of that one. Yeah, well, he's in front of the backboard. That's why. <laughs> we'll be back in one minute. Tennant, the gentleman we spoke about before, let's go in the big three. That will get you up out of your seat if you're a fan for the Rams. Well, Bangor came out smoking in the first quarter with a nine-point lead at the end of one. South Portland now regrouped heading into the second. Working it around a little more patiently now. Well, South Portland's had some good shots. They just haven't made them, and that's, that's what's taking them out of their tempo. They've had some good shots right underneath. Tom's missed a couple under there, and Verzo. Livingston tries to go baseline. He's fouled on the way to the basket. Uh, Livingston's going to be tough to handle because he's left-handed and he has pretty good quickness. Reed called for the foul. His first, Bangor is fourth. Livingston not with the team last year. Transferred from uh, Portland. Huge crowd. You're looking at the... Uh, Bangor side. Right, the side we are on. South Portland, well, weather was bad. Price of gas was high. The announcers at home were better, so that's <laughs> you and I, Mike. <laughs> that alone almost made a, yeah, many well. folks drive up here. I know. All right, that's Toms with the basketball down the middle. Strong move right down through the Bangor defense. Steve Toms averages about 14 points a game on the regular season. He's one of the four players who averaged in double figures for South Portland, who had, seemed to have a different star every night. Five of the players hit 20 points at one time or the other during the season. 
Bangor with the ball and a seven point lead. Just under seven minutes to go first half. Bradford out front for Bangor over on the right to Reed. Reed takes it across the foul line. Fade away jump shot. Doesn't get the bounce. Tapped up by Houston and Bradford no good. And the rebound in Verzo off to Rich. In the front court to Toms. Toms loses the handle, now catches up with it and brings it out front to Rich, now to Livingston. Livingston out front. Over on the left to Hodge, out front is Rich. Down low, it's Toms. Toms is fouled by Dean Heaston, number 40 for Bangor. Toms is a pretty good offensive player and Heaston's gonna have his hands full. When you get a good offensive player like that that can play down in the blocks, even if you are a good defensive player, he's going to give you problems. Tony DeBias on the South Portland bench. And on the foul line for South Portland is Steve Toms. He and Inverso seem to be a little bit tight here early in the game. They have had some good shots, but they post up well underneath both of them. And yeah. you have a feeling that's going to change before this is over. Well, again, Bangor has this lead right now, nine points. They've gone in spurts. So they had a three from Tennant. They had a couple of put-ins by Heastead, the one by uh, Bradford. This, is, this has not been a dominant eight or nine minutes of basketball by the Rams. It's just that they have the lead right now. Tom's missed the first one, and the second one is all net. And it's a six-point lead for Bangor with 6.20 to go first half. John Tennant. In the backcourt, trying to avoid the double team. Passes up to Bradford, now to Pickering. Back out front, Tennant. He brings it top of the circle over on the left to Pickering. Dishes it off underneath to Clark, who's in there. And it's lost out of bounds by Bangor. And that Clark, only a sophomore at 6'5", gives Bangor an excellent boost off the bench. Bangor a little bit deeper than South Portland. That and a little bit of a height advantage for Bangor. Down underneath, Inverzo is crashed into. There's a nice pass for my Livingston down there. Yeah. Up here, of course, we get a great look at the entire floor, and you could see South Portland just isolating that backside for Inverzo. There's nobody there on the help side until it's, uh-oh, there's a read, and then it's too late. Reed not being Mark Reed, but a read anticipating what the defensive set's going to be. And the foul on John Tennant of Bangor. That's his first, number six on the team. And the foul shot by Darren Inverso is good. Well, a 68% free throw shooter for the Red Riots. The senior puts the second one up and in. It's a four point lead for Bangor. 5.55 to go first half. And it's Pickering with the ball for Bangor. Off to Tennant near midcourt. Tennant dribbles left, passes to Pickering. Pickering looking down low. Brings it up front to Bradford. Quickly over to Tennant on the right. Drives baseline. And he's called for a player control foul. Rich did a good job that time as far as steering Tennant. And I'm not sure who picked that up. Toombs. This is when you talk about team defense. This is what you do. You funnel. You funnel into the help side. That is textbook help side defense. Second foul on Tennant. Number seven on Bangor. South Portland has committed only two. 5.25 to go in the half. Baseline, Toms, nice move. Doesn't get the basket, though, but saves it. Inbounds off the leg of Pickering and Bangor, so a heads-up play by Steve Toms. Bangor will go with a timeout, it looks. Bangor timeout, 5.22 to go in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Fans with confetti through the hair. I know, it's, I know that feeling. You know that feeling? Yes. Bangor called the timeout with 5.22 to go in the half and a four-point lead. South Portland possession underneath their basket. Toms will look to put it in. Into Hodge. Hodge pull up jumper left to the foul line. It's short. And the rebound Bradford for Bangor. Quickly off to Mark Reed who will walk it up. 
Picked up at midcourt by Steve Tom. Reed off to Pickering on the left. Back out front, it's Clark. Now back to Reed. Reed on the baseline, pull up jumper, won't go, and the foul is called against South Portland. Number 30, Toombs, Toms. Toms, Toombs, Toms. T-H-O-M-B-S. I'm gonna subscribe to that phonics course I give. Here it is, now you don't get the help side that we talked about before, Reed just one-on-one. -on -one. Again, good offensive player. He's gonna be tough to handle out in the open. Third foul on South Portland, the first on Toms, and now Bangor loses the ball underneath the basket after the inbounds pass. South Portland, it's Rich off to Livingston. Livingston with an air ball, and it's Chris Pickering and Bangor on the rebound. And Mark Reed brings it up. Reed, foul line, no good. Livingston on the rebound. Off to Burt Rich, Rich down the left side. Picked up by Eric Murray. Checking in the game for Bangor, number 20. Murray guarding Rich down low. Tom, one on one, crashes into Clark, and Clark is called for the foul. Tom's is awfully quick down on the blocks. When he gets it down there, he's real aggressive offensively. He doesn't look too many times to pass the ball back out in the perimeter. Those are the shots he's been missing up until now. situation on your screen fouls to give new category I know that's one of your favorite categories yes it is often overlooked Steve Tom's on the foul line buries it for South Portland cutting the Bangor lead to three with 416 to go in the half Tom's again uh, shoots about 71.7 percent from the line Misses that one, and Clark on the rebound, and quickly gives it off to Reed. And Mark brings it up slowly. 4-10 to go first half, Bangor by three. On the right, Pickering loses the handle, loose ball scooped up as Darren Inverso goes to the floor. Then he tries to toss it off to Toms, but it's ahead of Toms and out of bounds. The latest jargon is now you listen to college coaches or the announcers, the big time announcers, Mike, and not to be confused with us. <laughs> have a handle. Does he have a handle? Simply meaning, can he handle the ball? Not sure how that was derived, but. Where did any of our cliches come from? Who knows? Bradford off to Pickering on the left. Down the middle, Pickering with a strong move. Uh, that's a young man that really came to the forefront in that championship game. And he doesn't, he, he takes what the defense gives him, doesn't try to force it. If yeah. it's there, he'll take it. That's a smart ball player. He's learned his role over the years. The advantage of playing together these three years as varsity players, nine of them. Baseline shot, Livingston is no good, and a collision on the rebound. Let's see who gets called on this one. That. Pickering, we saw him hit a three out there, I should say a two out there before. Now, his defensive player has to be aware of that. Gives him a little bit of a pump fake when that defensive man leans. Now he puts the ball on the floor. So inside, outside. Pretty even on the turnovers, Willie. Uh, we got to get another category in there. Takeaways, <laughs> and we have to start calling them giveaways. And the first substitution for South Portland, Rob Neal is in the game, 6'2 senior. This is great. We got to give credit to these graphics people. This, this is our... He came in for Livingston. See, we had three extra days to work on the graphics uh, because of the uh, the big blizzard. That's good. Reed on the baseline. Nice move. Mark Reed finding some daylight and just working around the defense. Bangor on top, 22-15. Three minutes to go in the half. Underneath, the shot is missed by Toms of South Portland. Follows up with his own rebound, and he's fouled. Mark Reed always, and how many times you say, again, opinion, I like an aggressive offensive player, and, and many times kids, they're not sure when to take the shot, and they can hurt you more than when they don't. Reed is not the case. He, he's a good, aggressive offensive player. I think that's what makes Bangor tough, not just Mark, but the other four that go with him. They are all aggressive offensively. And Mark, with a good court awareness, comes underneath the uh, backboard, knows where he is. 
The foul was on Eric Murray of Bangor, his first, and it was Steve Toms making the first foul shot. And, and South Portland has not shot real strong from the line so far up until now. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. Tom's second foul shot is no good. And the rebound is going to be picked up by Neal of South Portland. Off to Rich. Rich at the foul line. And Bird hits it for two. And it's a four-point Bangor lead. Near the end of the first half. And Mark Reed again brings it up slowly for Bangor. Picked up there by Steve Toms of South Portland. Now Reed looking at the baseline brings it back out front to Pickering. Yeah, we'll go to the stack. Cutting down the middle is Clark. And he scores for Bangor. That was run real well because they caught South Portland napping on that left side. Dribble around a couple times when you don't suspect it. Cut somebody to the basket. Bangor by six, 2.10 to go in the half. Down low, it's Toms on the baseline with that strong move. Again, it won't drop for him. And Reed has the board for Bangor. He brings it up. Now Reed will bring it back out towards midcourt and direct his teammates. Now we get a real good look at it. Mm. Nothing more than make the defense make a mistake. You'll see that back man in the stack always go to the inside. Always make the defensive player chase you. If he doesn't, you got a layup. Mark Reed at midcourt, dribbling, looks over to the bench. Brings it over on the left on a slow dribble. Now Murray cuts up top, takes over the point. Back to Reed. Minute 25 to go in the half, Bangor by six. Now Murray back up on the point. And Reed at midcourt, down to a minute 15. Out front, it's Pickering now, rotating up top. Pickering dribbles over on the right, looks at that baseline, brings it back out front to Murray. Now, all of the Bangor players appear to have a what, Michael? Handle, is handle, Jeopardy? handle, handle. See, we talk, this is like a re, re Okay, Willie, what is handle? Handle means you can handle the ball. If you have a handle, means you're a good ball handler. Need to watch more college ball, I guess. Well, I try not to, but occasionally something slips in. We're down to 35 seconds. Bangor continues to use up the clock. South Portland gets a little more aggressive on the defense now. Bangor spreads it out. Pickering on the right. Now to Clark, to Bradford, 22 seconds. Bradford on the left. Plenty of time. Oh, yes. Reed out front, near midcourt. And they'll stack it up high again. 13 seconds, and Bangor used up, I think, a little over two minutes on this play. Yeah. Reed on the right, Bradford three-point land. He buries it with four seconds on the clock here in the first half. Just what they wanted to do, and South Portland cannot get a shot off. They worked it right down to the wire, and they got into the hands of their best shooter. We'll be back in two minutes with Tim Throckmorton at the half. music and entertainment on the court. We're joined by Jacqueline Zoychak, who is um, principal of uh, South Portland High School. Jacqueline, this rivalry is really growing thanks to the, the five overtime game last year. There must have been a lot of talk about that win for a long time in South Portland. It's, it's legendary. People are still talking about it. They're going to talk about it for decades to come. Does that make it fun to, to come up here for the fans that brave the weather to come up here to, to, to watch it over again? It certainly does. It's very healthy to have this rivalry between the schools as long as it's handled appropriately. Is it uh, something that they've been looking forward to? I would think uh, John Wassenberg's not around anymore, but a lot of the same players are. There must have been a lot of talk through the year and through the tournament at, in Western Maine that uh, it would be nice to come up here and Jimmy do it again. We take it a game at a time. Jacqueline, what, what's going on at South Portland that uh, might be interesting for uh, the people around the state to know? It's more than just uh, athletics. I'm sure there are a lot of academic endeavors going on in South Portland. Like most schools in the state, we're in the process of renewal and restructuring. We're looking at um, longer periods, a competency-based diploma, studying these topics. Jacqueline, thanks very much for joining us. South Portland down by nine points, but plenty of time to come back. 
They're very capable of a surge. We've seen it before. It should be a great one. Thanks very much for joining us. Jacqueline Sojak, the principal at South Portland High School. You know, Just before the uh, end of the first half, worked his play to perfection, Willie. Yeah, they ran off. I think it was almost two minutes, you said. Then with around four seconds left to go on the clock, they kicked it out to Bradford, who just drilled it for a three, and that ended the first half. And according to percentages, they got it into the hands of the man who is their best shooter. And Bangor goes into the locker room with a nine-point lead at halftime. I don't know about five overtimes or anything, but this is shaping up to be a good second half. Portland just seeming to get their legs there towards the uh, end of the first half. Bangor with the possession to start things off, and it's Mark Reed. Pickering now. Down underneath, it's stripped away. Pass intended for Tennant. Rich comes out with it, goes end to end, lays it up and in. Burt Rich. Transition basketball. Cuts the Bangor lead to 70 early in the second half. Easton deep on the right side. Misses Bradford on the rebound. Out near midcourt to Mark Reed. Now to Pickering. Pickering sees some daylight on the baseline. Dishes it off, off to uh, Tennant. And Tennant misses the shot, but he did draw the foul. The last one we saw with Rich, that all started with simply a loose ball. He came up with it now. The floor, he goes almost literally from end line to end line. Nobody there to pick him up. Just lays it over the front of the rim for two. And we had a foul on Ryan Hodge of South Portland on that collision underneath the basket a moment ago, and John Tennant on the foul line. 67% free throw shooter for Bangor. And the Rams back up over the Red Riots by eight with 7.15 to go third quarter. And Tennant gets the roll on the second one. And it's rich for South Portland. He goes underneath and a double team. It's blocked and he tries to save it inbound. Yeah. But he was out. He sent out the invitations early because he had a lot of company. Trying to do the same thing he did last time from a little bit of a different angle, but but the Rams are saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. We, we remember that one. He had more than enough white shirts there. Bangor brings it up against full core man-to-man. -man. It's Pickering. Now Mark Reed. Reed dribbles over on the right, takes it down towards the corner. Passes out front to Houston on the left to Pickering. Cross court to Tennant. Pickering at the foul line over to Houston on the left. He'll fire it up. It's long. And the rebound comes away to South Portland. Rich, long up for a pass, is picked off by Houston of Bangor. Back to Reed. Reed on the baseline. Backs it off the glass and in. Had a pretty good idea he wasn't going to pass that one. Not from eight feet. <laughs> Nice bank shot off the glass. Rich for three out front for South Portland. Burton Rich, who averages about 17 points a game to lead South Portland in scoring on the regular season. Cuts the Bangor lead to eight with that three. Pickering down the middle. He sees it, he takes it. South Portland now, they're trying to get up some type of a trapping defense, and someone's not rotating up. I mean, we've had people wide open at the other end. Hodge on the baseline for South Portland. Well, shovel shot is no good, and the rebound, Bangor. Bangor by 10, 5.45 to go third quarter. Easton on the right baseline, brings it out front. Tennant now to Reed. Reed up top, brings it left. Has it knocked out of bounds by Ryan Hodge of South Portland. And it's Tennant. Off to Bradford, nearly lost it out of bounds, but yanked it back in. Reed on the left, fadeaway jump shot is no good. Rebound Darren Inverso of South Portland. Off to Hodge, quickly in the front court. Now Rich takes over out front on the point. And we're back in that 2-3 zone. With a 10-point lead, they can afford to do that. Toms, who has been quiet, tries to pass it off on the baseline. It was deflected by Houston. Real active hands by the Rams in that defense. 
Tennant over to Pickering. Pickering is down low to Reed on the baseline, rolls around the rim and out. Saved in bounds by Livingston. Saved in, but I think they said he was on the end line when he took off. And with that, South Portland's going to want to talk things over. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Roger Reed and the Bangor bench in a deep discussion now with just under five minutes to go in the third. They have a 10 point lead. Mike Hale and Willie Gavitt with you, along with the folks from WPXT, Fox 51 out of uh, Portland, and the folks at WAGM TV Channel 8 in Presque Isle, WABI TV Channel 5, and we forgot radio last time, AM 91, WABI radio as well. So. Welcome to all you folks for uh, joining us tonight. South Portland had called the timeout. Bangor has the basketball. It's Reed to Pickering. Pickering in the paint, down the middle. Isolation play from the bench. They knew exactly where they were going with it. Moving Bradford out of the way and isolating Pickering underneath to go one on one. And we've seen him grow in confidence with that shot down the middle. He used to hesitate a little bit on that. Well, when you're up by 10, you can do a lot of things you don't normally do if you're down by 10. And it's Rich out front for South Portland. Over on the left of Livingston. Out front, it's Hodge. Down low, Toms was left open underneath. And he scores a layup. Stephen Toms, a 6'3 senior. Long up court pass, Easton for Bangor on the baseline. Dishes off to Pickering. Pickering with a pretty shot underneath. Pickering says, hey, let me try this again. That first one went pretty well. Bangor 37, South Portland 25, 345 to go third quarter. Bangor, you can see they're playing with a lot of confidence right now, both ends of the court. Livingston, three-point land, fires it, gets it off just ahead of Pickering's hand. And uh, no good. Bangor on the rebound. Reed up to Bradford, and somebody from South Portland did Livingston, it. I believe. Got a hand on it. And last touch by Bradford. It's Tony Tobias goes back to his bench. Roosevelt. Seth Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Six, Haven't seen him yet. 6'2 senior. Comes in for Inverso. Portland, South Portland rather with the ball. It's Rich on the right side, missing it this time in three-point land. Livingston with a nice follow, and the putback is good. Jerry Livingston, Tony DeBias happy to have him transferring over from Portland for this school year. 2.55 to go into third, Bangor by 10. And it's Bradford out front. On the left of Houston. Pickering wants to shoot some more. <laughs> <laughs> Felt pretty good the other three times. Two for two. Let's see what happens when I get it the third time. Tenet on the left. Bangor being patient now. And they can afford to be with a 10-point lead and 2.25 to go in the third. Yeah. They're looking to have South Portland make a careless mistake the pass is looped down to Houston he misses it in traffic the follow by Bradford is no good and then a foul third time around on South Portland Steve Tom's number 30 Bangor is doing a lot better job as far as getting the second third and fourth shots off that offensive glass now Granted, they're not going in, but still they're having the opportunity to get those high percentage shots in close. And South Portland's not doing that, at least not with the consistency that the Rams are. John Coyne, a sophomore. Seeing his first action. What better way to get experience than in a state championship game? Easton for Bangor makes the foul shot. Livingston of South Portland was called for that foul. His first, team second. Bangor has not committed a foul here in the second half. Second one is no good. 
That is John Coyne with the ball for South Portland. On the left to Rich. Cross court pass to Coyne. Tries to pass it in the middle to Inverzo, and Bangor takes it away. Heaston off to Pickering, back to Heaston. And now Mark Reed out front takes over at the point. A minute 45 to go, third quarter. Bangor leads 38 27. Tennant cuts up top to the foul line, stops, it comes up short. And Pickering gets the rebound, and back out front it goes. Mark Reed near midcourt. Top of the key to Tennant. Tennant to Heaston. On the left, Pickering brings it across the foul line now. Passes on the right side to Reed. Minute 15 to go, third quarter. Easton deep in the right corner, brings it back out to Reed. And Bangor again, at just over that two-minute mark, has chosen to be patient. And as you've said, Willie, really, to see if South Portland makes a mistake on that back door. Down low, the pass intended for Reed, and he was fouled. Oh, yeah. Toms was leaning on him, and Mark moved, and Toms just kind of tumbled over. And got leaning. Got caught. <laughs> I guess he was leaning. <laughs> he was leaning long before the ball, I think, was even thrown in. Tennant sees him, and <laughs> Reed doesn't even know it's in the air. He's just trying to survive underneath. <laughs> That's the second one on Tom's, third on South Portland, and Bangor works it back out near midcourt to Reed again with 50 seconds remaining, third quarter. And now away from the basketball down underneath, a foul is going to be called. This one will go against Bangor. Yeah. A little shoving and... Well, there's a lot of pushing going on underneath. If they're allowed to play physically for two or three, they're going to continue to play. And then they're going to see what they can get away with. Roger Reed sending someone in, and that someone is Nat Clark in a moment. Coin on the right. In this case, John Coin. Chris Coin is also on the team on the bench. Rich out front. Threads a needle down the middle and off the glass and in. Good concentration by Rich to get through the traffic. And South Portland can't afford to swap baskets right now. They trail Bangor by nine with 17 seconds to go third quarter. Tennant on the right side brings it back out front to Reed with 12 seconds. Near the end of the third quarter, Reed on the left. Pull up jumper, no good. Rebound, Heaston puts it up and in. Basket will count for Heaston. With four seconds on the clock, he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Yeah. Keeping people off the offensive board is so important. Your first responsibility is to be sure your man does not get the ball. Not that you get the ball, but that your man does not get the ball. And I think Coyne had the assignment of checking him off the board. He, he went to the ball first. Easton makes the foul shot, makes it a three-point play. That was Coyne's first foul. Team's fourth. And the shot by Coyne just before the gun. Is no good, and Bangor leads 41 to 29. We'll be back in a minute. Mike Hale and Willie Gavitt with you at the Bangor Auditorium. Thanks for joining us as we head into the fourth quarter of this state championship game. And the last eight minutes of basketball, 92-93. Kind of brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? Traveling on South Portland. Well, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. We're wrapping up the regular high school basketball season. Four-day extension. A little moisture on the floor. It's Tony DeBias on the South Portland bench, leaning on one knee. I think Bangor senses perhaps a goal ball for the trophy case. Well, they're in the driver's seat, but we got a long way to go. They remember very well last year when they had the feeling they might have that goal ball. There was three minutes to go. They were up by 12, and they watched it slip away. They went into five overtimes, and it seemed more like a nightmare then. Five seconds. So both teams turn it over here in their first possessions in the fourth quarter. Bangor by 12. 
Burt Rich for South Portland out front. Over on the left to Hodge. Down low to Steve Toms. Back out front to Rich. Rich penetrates. Pull up jumper is good. Burt Rich. And Bangor staying in that 2 3 zone. Now we get a little bit of trap. Pickering down the middle off the pass from Bradford. Once you get it over the top of that first trap, you should score every time. Pickering and Heaston really have made a difference for Bangor. Rich down the middle, missing the shot. Bangor on the rebound. Tennant, Reed, and Bradford are there. But then when you got guys like Pickering who pick up the pace, as Bradford scores down the middle for Bangor, they're up by 14. South Portland's got to extend, and when they do, they give something up underneath. You can't have it both ways. Foul line, the shot won't go for Inverso of South Portland. Reed has the rebound for Bangor. Six and a half minutes to go in the game. Bangor by 14. Now it's Tennant with the ball out front. Dribbles left. Gives it off to Pickering. Pickering dribbles right. Brings it right back out on the top to Reed. Reed dribbles left. Now Tennant rotates up. Backing up high. Pickering. Bangor does this well, and they don't make a lot of mistakes. Rich tries to steal it, and Burnt Rich is called for the foul. Well, they ran off about 39 seconds. And it looks as though South Portland's going to want to talk this over. South Portland wants a timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. At the auditorium, the uh, Lawrence girls won their third straight state championship tonight, and we have six minutes to go in the boys' Class A state game. Bangor leads South Portland 45-31. But we still have six minutes to go. It would be another remarkable comeback by the Red Riots of South Portland with six minutes left to go and being down by 14. We saw Willie's favorite categories, uh, fouls to give and timeouts. Great ones. An inspiration to any aspiring young coach. That foul on Rich was his second just before the timeout. South Portland has five as a team. Bangor has one. No one in the bonus with 5.40 to go in the game. Bangor again being very patient. Now into the four corners, spreading it out. First time Bangor has used this in the game. Used the stack earlier. As Heaston and Pickering playing pass on the right. Now Pickering brings it to the foul line, tries to put it down to <laughs> Bradford, bounced off the bottom of the backboard into Bradford's hand. Just the way we diagrammed it during that timeout. So Pickering, Pickering back door, wide open for the easy layup. Bangor by 16, five minutes to go. Long three-pointer by Burt Rich is no good. Pickering has 15 points in the game. He averages five on the season. Reed behind the back dribble. He scores down the middle. Bangor is on fire. They're up by 18. Three-pointer by South Portland is in and out by Ryan Hodge, and Tennant has the rebound for Bangor. Four and a half to go, Bangor up by 18. It's Pickering out front for Bangor, off to Tennant. Bangor is just gonna have too many ball handlers, too many good players, I'm afraid. Tennant tries to pass it in the middle to Bradford. Bradford has it stolen in there, picked off right in front of him. Rich over on the right to Livingston. Livingston tries to dish it off, it's knocked loose by Bradford. Pickering hands it off to Reed. Reed, three on one fast break. Bradford misses the layup. Heaston on the follow, no good. Heaston again is going to be fouled by Livingston, I think. Number 23. We, we talked about this, about the defense relaxing just for a split second. 
and then go in the back door the old backyard basketball give and go and read to Pickering picture perfect. Livingston of South Portland picked up his second and the sixth on the team and a timeout. South Portland will call the timeout and we'll be back in 30 seconds. The Bangor Auditorium, the Bangor fans on their feet as their team has an 18 point lead with 357 to go. South Portland fans on the far side hoping to have something to cheer about here. Roger Reed and the Bangor Rams coming out of the huddle. Why do you suppose they got that simply the best? Hmm. Now Houston was shooting. He had to go out because of the blood rule. He took a shot in the nasal area. So now the substitution will be shooting his foul shots. And South Portland with no timeouts left. Something that used to be unusual, but this year we've seen it happen several times. So Clark will go to the foul line to shoot Easton's foul shots. Clark missed the first one, makes the second one. Bangor by 19, 3.55 to go. Understand it was 34 years ago, the last time Bangor won a state championship. And this one's not over, but Bangor's in the driver's seat. A nice defensive play by the Rams underneath. And Mark Reed just knocked it away, simply slapped it away. Three and a half to go, Bangor by 19. It's Reed on the right side. Out to Bradford. He hands it off in midcourt to Tennant. Tennant down the right side, passes quickly back out front to Mark Reed. 3.20 to go in the game, Bangor by 19. It's Reed on the left, stops his dribble, looks down low, and goes back out front to Tennant. John Tennant. At 21 big points in the Eastern Maine Championship game. Nice steal by Ryan Hodge. Breakaway layup, he's got it. Bangor by 17 now. 2.55 to go in the game. Ooh, Tennant just got across midcourt. Bradford missing on the baseline. Matt Clark, the sophomore, number 42 with the follow, and Bangor's back up by 19. 2.40 to go. Here comes South Portland. It's Burt Rich. Off to Livingston on the right. Three pointer is short. And it bounces right into the hands of Chris Pickering. Off to Mark Reed. Up court, two on one. Clark to Bradford. Bradford with an easy layup. Bangor by 21. 2.20 to go. Bradford with 11 tonight. Rich from the foul line for South Portland. Off the back of the rim and over the backboard out of bounds. Big time you look down and can advance the ball. Now Clark had one before that. He sees Bradford all alone just around the back, and there it is. Two on one. Clark goes to the bench. Basic happy campers. Easton is back in there with some gauze up his nose. Down the middle. It's Pickering. I believe he has 17. Bangor, 56. South Portland, 33. Three-pointer from the left side by Hodge is no good. Easton on the rebound. He's going to slow it down. Bangor with a huge lead with a minute 45 to go. It's Tennant out front, guarded by Rich. Now off to Pickering at the point. Pickering on the right, hands it off to Reed. Reed brings it left. Now Tennant out front will draw the foul. Go against 25, Burt Rich. And from the looks of it, Pickering has simply put on a one-man show. Starting here in the second half. Not bad, 17 points from a man who averages five on the season. And the sign says the fat lady is singing. And 
Easton comes out and Kip Keeling is in for Bangor. Steve Toms is coming out for South Portland, has had a great career with the Red Riots. Number 30 heading to the bench. He got the goal basketball last year, but not this year. Tennant makes the foul shot. And Rob Esty comes in for number 24, Ryan Bradford, as the Bangor bench is all smiles. Tennant on the foul line made the first one and the second one. And it's 57-33. Also coming in for Bangor is Matt Hart for Chris Pickering, who's had a great game, and he comes out to a little extra applause by the Bangor fans. And the action resumes now. It's Hodge deep on the left side. Long three-pointer is no good. Kip Keeling on the rebound for Bangor. Minute 15 to go in the game. Keeling, foul line, swish. Keeling comes in and hits one for Bangor. It's 60 to 33. Only a minute five to go. It's Hodge on the left, down on the baseline. The shot is up and in. That was Seth Roosevelt. Under a minute, Michael. So after 34 years, Bangor will return another gold basketball to the trophy case, but Roger Reed wants to call a timeout with 50 seconds to go. And this is a program, the, a lot of the seniors that are playing for Bangor have been looking at this for four years. And we'll take a 30-second timeout. Well, the Bangor fans edging on the floor, just waiting for a chance to explode. They had the T-shirts already. Confidence. Pride in the past, <laughs> faith in the future. <laughs> 50 seconds remaining in the game. Bangor, 60 to 35, as they exploded in the second half after leading by nine at halftime. Keeling into Reed. Reed, fadeaway jump shot is good to the left of the lane. Mark Reed playing out his career. He's been uh, starting pretty much since he was a freshman. Dished off down low, baseline. This shot is good. That was number 20, Kevin Kimball of South Portland. Keeling out front, long one is no good. And we come the other way, Brian Harvey for South Portland. Reed with a steal. Eight seconds, backcourt violation. Passed it off to Matt Park, who is still in the backcourt. Reed getting caught up in the excitement, a player who normally doesn't make many mistakes, but. Wanted to give everybody a shot at the hoop. Three seconds remaining. Bangor 62 and South Portland 37. And Pat O'Malley in the game, number 12 for South Portland. All right, South Portland with the ball. Three seconds to go. Reed with a steal and a half-court shot. It won't go in, but he nearly ended it with a bang, and the Rams are champions. I'd say that's a crowd. Mark Reed signs a basketball for a fan, and it was back in 1958-59 season when Bangor beat Lewiston. 65-64 was the last gold basketball. And again in 93, by a score of 62-37 to over South Portland. They had to survive an overtime semifinal win against an excellent Lawrence team. And had to beat an undefeated Old Town team to get another shot at the title and how sweet it is tonight. Once they got there, they weren't gonna lose it. They came in with a lot of confidence right from the opening tap. Yep. They looked like a team on a mission. 